Okay, welcome back. Uh, today we are going to continue our C tutorial and we are going to finally talk about basic pointers. Um, it's a very important topic in C and one that causes a lot of uh, emotional grief but really isn't that hard at the end of the day, but it can be a little confusing for people. Um, so we are going to start, we are going to declare a regular integer um, and then we are going to use this new operator that we haven't seen before. Um, it is the ampersand, and we are going to use it to uh, call the reference for where the integer is stored in memory. So it'll probably give us something that looks like this if we actually ran this code. Um, every variable that we declare in our program is stored somewhere in the computer's memory, obviously. And you can think of, for all intents and purposes of, the, of this video, the computer's memory as a list, kind of like this list down here on the side, that in each one it can store, you know, a byte or something like that. It can store eight bits. And in this list, these are all of the places that we can store value, some things, an integer in you know basic C a basic n is four bytes so it would take up four spots um, but when we uh, declare any variable it doesn't matter if it's an int a car anything a struct it has an address which is where the variable starts so let's say I started at 286 because that's where it starts in the code that's not how it works obviously but um, 286 it would go down one two three four and this would be where our integer was stored now uh, uh, the ampersand, like I said, it pulls the reference from the variable, so it actually pulls the location, and that is essentially a pointer. The location for the variable, where it is stored, its address, that is what the pointer is, kind of. The pointers themselves are variables that hold, their separate variables that hold an address to a different variable. Now, the confusing thing can come with the fact that pointers also have addresses and you can have a pointer to a pointer but basically uh, like that it, obviously you know we might encounter it at times but try not to think about it like that just think about the fact that, of a pointer is instead of holding a value instead of holding a variable like like you know 400 like a number that we're using is like a pokedex constant instead of storing that it's storing the address that that variable that 400 is then stored inside of it's basically you know we said that 286 is the number here for this int and, and if we're looking at this as our memory then if we're declaring a pointer and then we go down to 289 this is where the pointer is it might be four bytes as well um, it might just be one. Uh, I think they are usually one byte. Um, and this pointer holds the value 286. It has its own number 289, which is its own address, but it's holding 286 as a pointer to this variable here. Um, if we declare it in that way. So how you declare a pointer is you start with a type. Each pointer has a type and that type is the type that it's going to be pointed to. So here we're pointing to ints. So the pointer is an int type. Otherwise it's a car, a struct, whatever. Um, you can make a pointer of any variable type. And then you use the asterisk, the star operator. So it's int star and this is together. And I know it looks to like, you know, like the star is a part of the pointer, but it's really not. We just, that's convention. Sometimes it's like this. It depends on how you, or like this, I don't know. This is how I initialize my pointers. Um, so the pointer, you know, this is, it can be a name of anything. It could be barg, bag, it doesn't matter. Um, we're going to keep it as pointer though, because that's what we're using throughout just to be consistent. Um, a lot of the time, if you aren't, declaring its value straight away if you aren't uh, giving it a value assigning a value to it you want to initialize the pointer as null this basically means if you're trying to access the pointer if you're trying to access what's at the pointer it's going and it's if you don't give it something if you try to access uh, the value before you give it something it's going to be garbage data because it hasn't actually initialized the value for the pointer so it's just going to be whatever's in memory at that time which can be anything and it can have wacky consequences it will crash your program it can do a lot of things um, so we use the null uh, 
constant to uh, make sure that the pointer when it's first initialized doesn't doesn't do any of that wacky stuff but obviously if we just declared its value straight away that wouldn't be a problem uh, if we want to assign it something we have to assign it the we have to assign it in an address so we use this ampersand like we used up here to print the address this is an example of an address we use that same operator to assign an address and we can use this for any variable again so there are some functions in C that we obviously don't use in Pokemon like scanf they require um, they require a, a address as their variable for um, like the strings if you if you're trying to store stuff um, they require an address instead of uh, instead of the variable itself so you have to add this if you're not already passing it a if you're not already passing it a pointer you have to pass it the pointer manually by adding the ampersand in front of it um, so here we assign the address into the pointer. The pointer doesn't need this address thing unless you want to find the address of the pointer, like you're creating a pointer to a pointer, but otherwise the pointer doesn't need that. The pointer is holding this address. So this printf will print the address of the, of the int variable. Now uh, this one here will print the value of the the value stored at this address, meaning the value at inside of the variable. This asterisk here, the same one that we use to initialize the pointer that uh, we use to create it, um, this value is, or this, uh, the asterisk is used to call inside of the pointer's address and pull out the required information, pull out the variable. So this will print whatever the bar is. We haven't actually initialized it here, so it'll be garbage data, but now it'll print zero um, if we ran it. So on to the next topic with pointers. We can use these pointers for a lot of things. Uh, we can use them to, we can return them and give them as uh, arguments to functions um, as we talked about with the scanf briefly but sometimes uh, because of scope in in C and in programming languages you can't edit if you're passing functions if you're passing variables to functions uh, uh, sometimes the compiler is going to create an, a copy of that of that value into a new variable with the scope of that function. So if I if I'm passing if I have this function and I give it an int here, instead of t passing a pointer to that int, it's going to create a new int with the scope of the function, and anything you do to that int will be done to that new int, not the original int. But if you want to have the function act on this original int, if you wanted to operate on it, then you can pass a pointer to it instead and then when it does when it affects the the pointer it will change the the int itself it will uh, because it's it's basically taking the address and then inside the function you're going to want to do something to that address you're going to access what's inside that address you know using the star or whatever and uh that's how you that's how you uh affect something outside the scope when you're you know working with something like an int you know some other variable types actually are passed automatically by um, by pointers instead of being uh, instead of being copied they're passed by pointers I believe uh, arrays like string arrays are passed by pointer instead um, but uh, if you want to do it yourself you have to declare it automatically and or to declare it manually and to do that, um, if we are having our argument inside of our function, well, this is our function definition right here. Um, we, normally we just have int and then the name of the integer, but we just do int pointing just like you would declare a pointer, um, just like you would declare any argument inside of a function. Uh, this is the format for it. And if we want to return a pointer, we do the same. Instead of having void or, or int, we have int pointer think of it like that so this function both takes an int pointer and it returns a pointer now this function doesn't actually do anything to the value here like I was talking about how you can affect this using the dereference but uh, you can uh, 
you can also change, you can also affect, instead of affecting the value inside of the pointer, you can affect the pointer itself because the pointer is an arithmetic, it's, it's, it's mathematical in C, you can add to it and subtract from it. Um, a lot of the time we use plus plus to do that because um, it's set up so that depending on the type of the pointer, so this is an int, um, it's going to add four bytes to the pointer because the int type is four bytes, uh, is, is has a size of four bytes. So let's say we were in an array of ints and we wanted to cycle through this array and we got a pointer to the first bit of the array. We had our pointer is equal to ampersand array one zero because it's zero index. So this pointer is now equal to the reference of the first value of this array. Well, we can pointer plus plus, pointer plus plus, pointer plus plus, and it'll move us through this array one by one uh, because it's an int array and the pointer uh, is a int pointer. So when we're plus plusing, the address is basically moving up by four. It's going from 298 to 293 to 297 and so on as you plus plus through it. If it were a car, it would only be going one because a, a character is only one byte. Um, so you can also minus minus, um, it's the same thing. It's the pointer minus the size of the pointer variable type minus the size of its type. Um, or plus the size of its type. And that's the, the pointer, the reference to the pointer, and it's plus a in memory going up or backwards if you wanted to go backwards. So if you were going through this array and then you want to step backwards through it, you would do the minus minus. Um, and you can do more complicated pointer math, obviously, uh, but that's gonna be outside the scope of this video and hopefully outside the scope of what you'll be doing in Pokemon World. I hope you don't have to do that complicated pointer math, uh, but if you do, there are other things you can do as well, but we are gonna keep going. Um, so we talked about the arrays as well. You, you can also have pointers to structs, like I said. Um, you, you know, this is just a declaration of a struct real quick right here so that we can declare a struct and then we're gonna declare a pointer to a struct. You declare it just like you declare an int. You know, you just have the type, which we, you know, use two keywords for, for the struct because we have the struct keyword, then the type of struct, and then the pointer, the reference, the asterisk, and then the pointer name itself, the name we are going to give to our pointer. Then we set the pointer by using the ampersand again with uh, this struct that we initialized right here with one, two, four inside of its ends. And now uh, in the last video, I talked about this. Normally, if you're accessing the struct directly, you use a dot, but if we're not accessing the struct directly, um, if we're using a, uh, if we're using a pointer, we use uh, we use this. It is the like the minus key and then the greater sign, and it's just a little arrow. And you want to make sure also to have your pointer as the thing you're accessing. Um, and it helps us because sometimes the the dot takes precedence. And if you have uh, like if you're casting it as something else first, um, you or afterward, you don't want it to try to look inside of the pointer itself instead of trying to look inside of what's inside of the pointer um, or bring back the address of what's inside of the pointer. So instead you use this to pull that out. Um, so that's pointer structs. Um, lastly, related to that, um, I'm not gonna get into it too much because it is a very complicated topic, but the game stores a lot of its memory using uh, pointers because sometimes in you know when we're working in like an on embedded system specifically um, but just in general all the time um, the game storing data in a couple different ways it's storing it in a more like strict like uh, stack well I shouldn't use those words but it's storing it in a more strict manner uh, where everything is set for the entire duration of you know the time that the game is running uh, inside of memory, but there's also a more volatile section of memory that sometimes if we're if we want to dynamically change the size of things, let's say we have a 
an array of structs and that array is changing, we're adding structs to it and subtracting structs to it depending on, on what's going on in the game at the time, like the amount of Pokemon on screen or something, instead of wanting to section off a whole bunch of memory be like, well, you can have 50 Pokemon on screen at any given time, so we're going to section off the space for 50 of these Pokemon structs. Um, now that takes up a lot of space, 50 Pokemon structs, so instead sometimes uh, in memory you're like, okay, well we're going to use this other section of memory and we'll section off three a size for a bit for three structs right now and then later we might want to reallocate that to a size of four and it might take over that spot it will it'll usually switch it around first because it needs to copy the values in but uh it might not it might uh just extend that section if it can if there's nothing behind it but you know it's going to manually dynamically create a new section of and that's the realloc command but um Anyway, uh, this malloc command in C, in Poke Emerald, I think a lot of time we use alloc, which is similar, um, but it's a macro for alloc, which is a lowercase c thing that actually takes two, pos two arguments. But anyway, um, when we're allocating memory in, uh, in Poke Emerald, uh, you might want to cast it as a struct because this alloc, it, it returns a pointer. Uh, and it returns a pointer to that section in memory. You, you, we want to create one that's the size of this struct, this box of struct. So we pass it the size of that's this the um, the argument to the alloc and the malloc, and these two functions are the size of what you want to be of what you want to store. So if you want to store 20 bytes, it's 20. This is the size of the struct, which is three bytes. So hopefully it's just three bytes, but it could be bigger, but it should just be three bytes. But uh, so here is, this is going to give you back a pointer to the start, the first, you know, byte of this address where it has now, you know, created a space for you. Um, but you need to cast that and we cast it just like we cast anything else But you got to make sure to include the star here the asterisk um, And we have to cast that as a struct box as pointer type so that we can access it like we would um, a struct box and then we can store that pointer um, in a new variable and then we can access this pointer and uh, That's how a lot of the memory is stored in Poke Emerald is using the dynamic memory allocation um, and we, you know, also, you know, need to free this when we're done using it because otherwise it's going to be there forever. Um, and that's part of, you know, reallocating and things like that. But, uh, we won't get into that too much here, but, uh, uh, they rely on pointers. So, um, when you're seeing things like that, when you're seeing, you know, alloc all around in the C code, um, in Poke Emerald, when you're looking at stuff, that's what it means in a short, uh, you know, roundabout way. I didn't get into it too much, and I'm sorry. Uh, the pointers already, I'm worried about some confusion, uh, especially with accessing pointers. Um, but for now, I think that's going to be it. Um, and if you have any questions, definitely make sure to ask, because this is a topic that people routinely get confused on. Otherwise, we will see you on the next video. Well, I just wanted to start the video again because I realized I didn't exactly go over this even though I did technically say it out loud. Um, so if you are trying to set into the original variable, um, you still, you know, you use this dereference here like this. You just set the, um, you know, the pointer equal to 10, but what this does is it sets the variable equal to 10 because that's what the pointer is pointing to. The pointer is pointing to the variable. So this basically just replaces it with var in the code and then var is being set to 10. Um, I think I covered that but I wasn't sure and I didn't have it written here so and while reading while looking through the uh, or listening through the what I had I wanted to make sure that that was covered just because it's a little bit important and I didn't want any questions about something so simple so um, there is how to assign something into the variable that is pointed to uh, um, and you know that'll be useful when you're you know using the dynamic memory allocation down at the bottom because when you're signing assigning something into the struct that's how you'll be doing it um, but using the uh, 
you know, this instead. But anyway, uh, I just wanted to add that, so I will end the recording now. <laughs>